After more than a decade searching for answers, Long Island investigators announced bombshell news last week. A suspect in the Gilgo Beach murders case is now finally in custody. Rex Sherman is a demon that walks among us. A predator that ruined families. Now, recently released court records reveal shocking details about the alleged Long Island serial killer, Rex Hewerman. Those include a disturbing online search history that showed the 59-year-old architect closely followed the Gilgo murders case from his home in Massapequa Park. Hewerman also stalked his victims and their families and sought out violent sex videos online. Documents detail his meticulous planning and timelines to commit the murders when his wife was out of town and his strange need to maintain harassing contact with victims' families after he murdered their loved ones. Um, you know, I'm standing here with uh, my law enforcement partners in the Gilgo Task Force uh, to announce uh, the indictment of defendant Rex Andrew Hurman, 59 years of age. Rex Hewerman, I'm an architect, I'm an architectural consultant, I'm a troubleshooter, born and raised on Long Island. Officials claim Hewerman is responsible for at least three murders that plagued the Long Island community starting back in 2010. Since then, 11 sets of remains have been recovered in the secluded Gilgo Beach area of Suffolk County, New York. Uh, these young women went missing between July of 2007 and September of 2010. They were found in De uh, December of 2010 by the Suffolk County Police Department, and then there was nothing, absolutely nothing. For, their, for the next 13 years, their cases went unsolved, until today. In early 2022, officials say a new Gilgo Beach task force comprised of Suffolk County Police Department, the Suffolk County Sheriff's Office, New York State Police, and the FBI was established. Just weeks later, investigators narrowed in on Hewerman as the prime suspect. We took analysts, we took detective investigators, and they worked on a daily basis with other talented investigators from all of the agencies here. Um, and. Uh, we started that in February 1st, 2022. Six weeks later, on March 14th, 2022, the name Rex Hurman was first mentioned as a suspect uh, in the Gilgo case. For more than a year, investigators kept watch on Hewerman, during which time they used more than 300 subpoenas, search warrants, and other legal processes to collect evidence in the case. Throughout it all, officials believe Hewerman was closely monitoring the Gilgo Beach investigation. Between March 2022 and just last month, Hewerman made more than 200 internet searches related to the Gilgo Beach investigation, looking up, quote, why could law enforcement not trace the calls made by the Long Island serial killer? And why hasn't the Long Island serial killer been caught? On top of that, court documents show Hewerman's home IP address followed the Suffolk County Police Department's Gilgo News website for updates on the investigation. That's why officials opted for grand jury proceedings in his case. So the grand jury has two things. It has power, it has reach, you can obtain documents, you can interview witnesses. But the other thing that the grand jury has, the grand jury has secrecy. No one knows what you do when you operate a grand jury proceeding. And we knew that when we were investigating this case and it, when we dealt with the media or whatever it was we were doing, um, we, were, we were playing uh, before a party of one. Because we knew uh, the person responsible for these murders would be looking at us. So we were very careful uh, how we, we, we handled the investigation. We maintained the integrity of the investigation, uh, most important, well, most importantly of all, we maintain the secrecy uh, of that investigation. And I think that's, uh, that's paid dividends uh, as we've seen today. Investigators primarily pointed to Hewerman's alleged use of burner phones. One thing that became immediately apparent uh, was at the time of the, uh, each of the murders, uh, the murderer, the, the defendant Hewerman, uh, he got a, a, uh, he got a, a cell phone uh, and a burner phone, which, uh, which is prepaid and anonymous. And for each of the murders, he got an individual burner phone and he used that to communicate with the victims 
Uh, then shortly after uh, the death of the victims, uh, he then would, uh, would get rid of the burner phone. Uh, and uh, right away, in December of 2012, uh, FBI uh, cast analysts, as, uh, special agents with the cast unit of the FBI, they immediately began looking at that cell site uh, uh, data. They compared the victims' phones with, uh, with the burner phones, and they immediately uh, honed in on some, some simi similarities, specifically uh, in the Massapequa Park area. And they looked at the, an area of a confluence of four cell towers, uh, and they realized that this was, had uh, significance because uh, the, the uh, per perpetrator of these crimes was probably located within this area uh, during, at or around the times of the murder. Uh, and that was mapped out, that was called the box, and it was an area uh, in Massapequa Park. Officials say Hewerman used fictitious names, email accounts, and burner phones to contact victims in the case. Investigators used Hewerman's American Express records to show he was in the same location as multiple of the burner phones when they were used to contact victims. Court documents read in part, quote, Significantly, investigators could find no instance where Hewerman was in a separate location from those other cell phones when such a communication event occurred. Uh, we also went back and looked at his cell site records, and we, were, we, we compared his personal cell site records with that of the four target phones, and we saw that there was areas of commonality. In other words, that whenever the, the target phones would, uh, would, would bounce off a cell tower, if, if the uh, Uriman, uh personal phone uh, bounced off a, a, a tower, it was always consistent and in close proximity uh, with the target phones. And at no time was there ever an instant where those target phones were, for instance, in New Jersey while uh, the defendant was, was on Long Island. Uh, so that was completely um, uh, consistent. Investigators say Hewerman was also consistent when selecting victims and disposing of their bodies. Uh, they were buried in a similar fashion, in a similar location, um, uh, in, in a similar way. Uh, all the women were petite. Uh, they, were, um, they, they all did the same thing for a living. Uh, they all advertised the same way. Uh, and there were, uh, immediately there were similarities with regard uh, to, the, to the, uh, the crime scenes. Uh, all, the women's, all the women were bound at the head, uh, at the midsection, uh, uh, or at the chest, and later at the legs. Four primary victims identified in this case, Maureen Brainerd Barnes, Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amber Costello were working as escorts at the time of the murders. Investigators note Hewerman's internet search history included specific searches for sex workers and torture-related porn, including, quote, Mistress Long Island, Mature Escorts Manhattan, and Girl Begging for Rape Porn. But officials allege Hewerman got more specific with his research, too. There was a lot of uh, torture uh, porn and, and uh, um, what you would consider, uh, you know, uh, um, depictions of women uh, being abused, uh, being raped, and being killed. Officials allege Hewerman had a disturbing fascination with victims' family members, staying in contact with them and making, quote, taunting calls. Court documents show how he used the victims' personal phones to contact their families after their murders. Maps show Hewerman's phone ping in the same location as the victims' phones during the time frame when their families received calls. He was searching, compulsively searching, pictures of the victims, but not only pictures of the victims, pictures of their, uh, their uh, relatives, their, their, their sisters, uh, their children, uh, and he was trying to locate those individuals. What's more, investigators point out Hewerman's wife was out of town when multiple victims were killed. We looked at the Hewerman family uh, travel records, and we learned that during the murders of uh, the last three women, um, Bartholomew, Waterman, and Costello, that during the commission of those murders, the, the, uh, the defendant's wife and children were, at, were out of New York State, and he was alone in the tri-state area. Though his wife may have been out of the area for multiple of the murders, investigators say what is believed to be her hair was recovered on multiple victims' bodies. 
uh, one of the things that we did is we followed him because we wanted to get an abandonment sample of his DNA, uh, which we were able to do. Uh, we also got uh, DNA samples, abandonment samples from his family. And then we went back and we got mitochondrial DNA testing. But investigators also matched Huerman's DNA to hair recovered at the crime scenes. According to court documents, investigators recovered a pizza box Huerman threw away in January 2023. The Suffolk County Crime Lab analyzed a piece of leftover crust connecting it to Huerman. Rex Huerman is a demon that walks among us. A predator that ruined families. And if not for the members of this task force, he would still be on the streets today. However, even with this arrest, we're not done. There's more work to do in this investigation regarding the other victims of the Gilgo Beach bodies that were discovered. Right now, officials say the investigation is still underway and new evidence could soon be collected. Hureman is being held without bail on charges of first and second degree murder in the deaths of Bartholomew, Costello and Waterman. He's pleaded not guilty to all charges and is due back in court on August 1st. Reporting for Long Crime Network, I'm Sierra Gillespie.